Good evening and welcome to Business Today on Channel I. On this program, we talk about business, entrepreneurship and many insightful topics with high-profile individuals. Keep tuning in to today's episode as well while we discuss business today. Today we have with us the founder and CEO of Good Life X and to know more about who this individual is, let's take a look at the character profile. Rangdula De Silva is the founder and CEO of Good Life X Private Limited, an innovation and development catalyst, building a new wave of life-enhancing companies in Sri Lanka to disrupt the old and transition into the new economy. Creating new realities and opportunities of growth for people to live a better and meaningful life in sync with nature. Founded in 2019 as a pilot project, Good Life X was the first sector specific accelerator in Sri Lanka, which has now taken wings as its own purpose driven private entity, elevating local startups and SMEs in the food, agriculture, design, wellness, and tourism spaces. Through its programs, GLX has worked with over 75 companies across these sectors. Randula is also the former CEO and currently advisor to the board at Hatchworks and former chief disruptor at Kes Sri Lanka, spearheading the culture of future of work and building multiple incubator and accelerator programs focusing on fintech, women in business, open innovation and initiating the first community fab labs in Colombo to name a few. She was a member of the Board of Trace Expert City and Sri Lankan chapter of the Global Entrepreneurship Network. Randula was also the head of the Information Intelligence Services of Verit Research before she took on working with startups. Randula is an advocate of social, systemic change and transpersonal leadership. She was a co-founder of Columba Talkies, the alternative film screening platform, and was the executive producer of the Sri Lankan feature film Avilena Suli and co-produced few other Sri Lankan short films and music. She holds a Master's in Development Planning and a BBA in Business Economics from the University of Colombo and is Shivening Research, Science and Innovation Leadership Fellow of the University of Oxford and was awarded Game Changer of the Year at the Women in Management Sri Lanka Top 50 Professional and Career Awards 2021 hosted in partnership with IFC. Randula's vision is to propose holistic growth in South Asia through evolutionary and regenerative approaches in business, art, community and life by amplifying efforts of different players and connecting dots for change. Good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, to begin, I would like to know what exactly does Good Life X uh, do as a company? Yeah. So we started off as an accelerator in 2019 mm -hmm. and we've grown into our own uh, private entity working with startups and SMEs, predominantly based in Sri Lanka, uh, who are working across nature-based value chains. So agriculture, food, wellness, tourism, and in design sectors as well. We work with these companies to really help them um, grow from where they are to where they ought to be, but consciously and sustainably, just not, not just simply, you know, accelerated growth, but we are really looking at what would these companies be and do if they become much more conscious and sustainable companies. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how we evolved to work with these companies. And that is really um, uh, our main stream of work. So um, along the years, uh, we've been active for three years now. We've worked with about 75 um, entrepreneurs across these sectors, uh, big and small. Mm -hmm. um, and we also work through our alumni network of these 75 companies, exploring interconnections, how these people can really work together and collaborate together so that we evolve and thrive as an economy, uh, which is a sustainable economy stemming out of Sri Lanka. All right. And uh, what exactly made you begin this uh, line of work? Um, so, I've been uh, working with the entrepreneurial and innovation ecosystem for a while now um, and um, what I noticed uh, when working with these um, associations, organizations, initiatives is that there's a lot of focus on tech, um, there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm, money going into tech and there's a lot of talent also uh, coming 
into um, and you know uh, growing through um, the technological um, uh, development and uh, transformations in Sri Lanka but sadly tech was really treated as an end and not a means um, it was really not directed of, of focus through to solving the rooted problems we have here in Sri Lanka across the traditional sectors when I say traditional sectors it is uh, you know the, the agriculture sector that has really been doing the same thing for the th past 30 40 50 years maybe and even though there's a massive boom in the in the technological um, sectors and a lot of young thriving innovators are coming out uh, through the technological sector this is really not trickling into the sectors that really need it mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka mm -hmm. they remain ancient they remain archaic they remain very old school so I really wanted to create a bridge between these two worlds because that's the only way that we can really leapfrog if we re remain in silos and the tech sector goes on to imitate and, and build me too stuff um, that's coming out of Silicon Valley and the traditional sector just goes on to not innovate and, mm -hmm. and be in their own silos we are really not going to go anywhere so this gap is really what made us um, begin this work and I'm not the only one who's um, doing this there's a lot of people who are in Sri Lanka working in their own ways and means um, to, to work towards a much more evolved uh, traditional sector and a much more connected uh, technological sector into the traditional um, sectors in Sri Lanka. So this is really what um, triggered our passion and, and made us really want to explore without just talking about it, mm -hmm. how can we actionize, how can we really connect these two um, uh, groups together and that's when we thought about hey why don't we build an accelerator where these two um, can meet accelerators are very very common for startups very very common for tech startups uh -huh. um, especially when I started this work in Sri Lanka there was no um, accelerator focused or no startup work um, even beyond accelerator that was focused in food that was focused in agriculture that was focused in tourism and wellness actually there was um, uh, once um, a very close friend who's a who's an angel and a VC who's an angel investor and a VC who asked me back then in 2019 why are you focusing on food this is really you know a waste of your, your energy talent um, why not build some SaaS product there'll mm -hmm. be a faster exit um, there'll be you know uh, uh, faster ROI um, and that person now today 2022 is investing into agriculture technology so that for me really is systemic change mm. um, us beginning this work and really taking baby steps have really made a lot of other people come into it and do this work mm -hmm. which really is a massive win because there's so much to do here and one player can't do it alone yeah that's right now how do you think uh, the post pandemic uh, health economic and uh, all sorts of these challenges uh, how have they made people really change the way that they're doing their business? I think um, there's massive changes that we saw in the global setting um, altogether. Um, business went beyond boardrooms. Mm. Um, when we come from a culture and we saw a culture, not just in Sri Lanka but outside, where there's, you know, success is about growth incumbent success and about monopolistic power um, covid and the lockdown that came with it really disrupted this flow of of, of power and work and it, it became a lot more open for people who were agile people who are responsive people who are energetic and innovative to plug into the mainstream economic models um, and thereby it, it really flattened the barriers for a lot of new innovative people to come into um, the main game and mm -hmm. change the game overall. Um, and we saw this in many sectors, urbanization, to food, um, even to travel. We saw when older, much larger corporates were struggling in 2020, very new players, very many new players came on to own the game. Mm -hmm. And they have now changed the entire um, uh, ecosystem in a sense of industries uh, so that n old players are learning from the new and are catching up and are playing catch up um, so that's one thing i think in sri lanka unfortunately um, unparalleled to the world mm -hmm. we have an extended crisis um, and and this is painful bitter pill to swallow to be in a financial crisis right after covid mm -hmm. i work with many travel sector entrepreneurs who were 
ready ready for the season um that that's that's happening uh, that's opening up right now but mm -hmm. um it's it's not a great time for sri lanka but um through every crisis there is a massive amount of opportunities if we just flip our perspective so i think um this has changed the game for a lot of people who are looking at this crisis as an opportunity and really honing in to um make the best out of it so because of that i think um a lot of people have um started to look at their lives in a much more self aware um uh, self driven uh, with, uh, with much more self awareness mm -hmm. with much much more consciousness and that has also trickled into businesses a lot of businesses across the world and in sri lanka are much more um conscious about what impact are they making to the world and this has also changed the game quite a lot mm -hmm. um in in the global context as well as sri lanka All right. Now you mentioned that uh, you don't just support businesses and you you don't just take them ahead. You also make sure that you pay attention to the sustainability factor. Now, when we talk about technology and sustainability, these are two things that a lot of companies are focusing on and an area which is uh, really gaining a lot of popularity these days. How important do you think it is uh, technology and sustainability in uh, shaping today's society? Um I I think it's it's not a trend anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a must have. It used to be a nice to have, but I think we are way beyond that point. Um I I think even a, a decade beyond that point of it being a nice to have. Um a, a climate change um and nutrition and wellness and how much we are connected as humans to the planet and how much we have destroyed it um by the way that we have really operated and grown through the industrial era has come to light um and because of this i think sustainability and technology plays a very close um uh, part hand in hand almost together and have a very close relationship and because of technology there's a lot of things that weren't possible before which are much more possible now mm. uh, in terms of looking for solutions um that are that are smart and and uh, climate smart uh, looking for solutions that imitates nature without going against it um and and looking at how um how uh, different matrices really works across sectors and how we can really explore synchronies between these different sectors um through data and through um the interconnected networks that technology makes possible um so with all of these things opening up it's very important i don't even like to use the word sustainability because because it's really overused in a, in, mm. a, in, a, in a in a in a lot of um, sad and bad ways yeah. um but um it's 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 very important for technology to have a very close relationship with um being attuned to nature mm. being attuned to um preserving being attuned to creating a positive impact towards our communities and towards our societies and that's in a nutshell the the whole um idea of of um the concept of what sustainability keeps within within that word um so i think these two words have a very close relationship and in the modern day i think no business can go on to be just a business for profit every business needs to have a purpose mm -hmm. uh, within it yes we are here to profit but we are also profiteering through creating um more purpose and more impact uh, towards the well-being of this planet and towards the well-being of uh, people as a whole so how does a business do good while doing well um has come to the surface quite a bit and um that really essentially is what we do because if you look at look at the global consumers mm -hmm. people are asking very different questions they are looking for transparency traceability lots of new words that were never asked before mm -hmm. and is sri lanka ready to plug into this this is the question we ask our entrepreneurs are you ready to meet the global consumer are you ready to serve them just ticking a box or you know going down a marketing avenue of greenwashing wouldn't help you you really need to be um aligned to these values at your core and we help them get there all right now in your opinion do you think um the majority of companies are ready or where where do we stand when it comes to that point um in a sri lankan sense no 
Uh, in a global sense, no. Okay. Uh, not ready, but I think because of the pandemic as well as the financial crisis, I think a lot of people feel the urgency, mm. uh, which is a good thing. So there is a there is a massive awakening. Readiness, I wouldn't think so because it's not an easy uh, transformation to swallow. It takes time. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Mm. So you can't you can't achieve quick results and you know have an overnight. Um, a transformation like you know we are going to be organic tomorrow that's not going to happen mm. it is going to be a transition that will take years so change is always great sexy and easy to initiate mm. it's really difficult to keep to until you see it through to the end so um, it really is about commitment it really is about resilience it really is about you really wanting to go there um, there's many people who want to go all the way but don't know how and um, there's a lot of people like us who are working with people like that to take them there mm -hmm. and that's why it's very important for different players in any sector be it nature-based value chains or outside completely different uh, um, uh, iot or um, sorry uh, it or uh, SaaS products even to work with other people in their ecosystem to work together to get themselves there you can't do it alone you need to really co-create all right and um, also i'd like to know a bit about um, your project uh, with dilma tell us a bit about that yeah so um that, that's a very uh, exciting project that we've just kicked off um with dilma t um the G dilma genesis project uh, actually um this is where we are really looking at working with um two different types of um, entrepreneurs. One, um, entrepreneurs who are into manufacturing mm -hmm. um, in really addressing the needs of lost ingredients or rare ingredients coming from Sri Lanka or ingredients that really haven't um, uh, optimized their fullest potential. Um, we all know from the day of independence to now, everything that goes out of Sri Lanka, almost everything, um, except for a few new entrants, are all going out in bulk, all going out in raw form. But sadly, I'm not saying this because I'm Sri Lankan and I'm proud to be Sri Lankan, but uh, most of the um, natural um, resources we have here have very unique rare properties, uh, be it turmeric, be it seaweed, be it tea. Uh, because of our soil and because of, of our ecology and biodiversity, we have a very, very um, rich uh, amount of properties uh, that is unique to the world. Our cocoa, cacao is very, very mm -hmm. rare. Our turmeric and cinnamon are very, very rare um, and, and high end. So it's a crime, honestly, a national crime to see this going out just in bulk mm -hmm. and, and the value added somewhere else in the world and the benefits, profits of it, as well as the impact of it really going to another economy in the world and not coming down here mm -hmm. to the farmers, to the people who are really growing it and doing the work. Uh, and we really want to break that wheel. And with Dilma, what we are doing is um, we've identified three ingredients, go to call a seaweed and jackfruit. Mm -hmm. um, and we are working with a set of entrepreneurs who are uh, innovating and manufacturing um, value added products out of, out of these three ingredients. And on the other hand, we are also working with um, entrepreneurs who are developing technological solutions or smart solutions to induce efficiency in um, creating these value-added products uh, and taking them out of Sri Lanka. So we work with tech young startup entrepreneurs and we work with um, SMEs who are into manufacturing um, hand in hand so mm -hmm. that they really co-create results together. This is funded by uh, the German Development Corporation together with the EU. Um, and we just kicked off uh, the SME part of it and accelerator applications are open right now. It's closing in a week. Um, I'd love to see much more tech entrepreneurs applying to it with uh, many more ag tech and food tech solutions coming in. All right. Now, you also speak a lot about uh, collaboration and co-creation. Uh, why is this so important? See, <laughs> there's not much we can really do alone. Mm. Um, there used to be a time where um, splitting the biggest part of the pie and owning that and hoarding that used to work. Not anymore, and that's really where why we why the world why why we why we ended up here mm -hmm. uh, as a global uh, as as a global economy as well as the Sri Lankan economy. We're facing a massive challenge um, and a, and and a massive crisis. 
um, in terms of um, uh, financial um, challenges as well as challenges in um, in the ecology and and um, the ecosystem as a whole and this is because we refuse to work together and we we just build silos of excellence where I am the king and and that is it um, but but sadly we really need to uh, connect with multidisciplinary individuals uh, people who are addressing the same problem with different angles be it the private sector public sector academia students innovators um, and even normal people on the ground doing the work in the grassroots can add so much to the equation of creating solutions um, when we are looking at solving hard problems and sadly the problems that we are solving today aren't you know having linear uh, answers it's not a to b to c for us to get from get, get from a to b there's so many other things that we have to solve because we we are living in a time point of massive transition mm -hmm. and transformation so you need a lot of different people to work together to achieve that common goal so it makes all the sense for you to co-create and collaborate and grow the pie versus splitting the pie and that really is what we encourage through our communities and i'm so um, inspired every day because we work with a lot of entrepreneurs who have the same mindset we work with a lot of partners similar mm -hmm. to dilma who has the same mindset um, and and uh, with that i think there's a different future we are building all together um, which is uh, which is not reflecting the mistakes that we've done in the past so basically teamwork makes a dream work absolutely all right and uh, also you use the word uh, regenerative in mm -hmm. in your work uh, what exactly does this mean yeah so i uh, regenerative really and I, I i said before i mentioned before that i don't like to use the word sustainability and we really as a company uh, and as a group of people we go beyond sustainability and even circularity we look at regenerative as the future mm -hmm. and we look at regenerative as really the future form of capitalism almost and this is where you move away from being extractive being just a take 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 person or take 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 company but uh, in the simplest most words right um, but you exist to create a positive and a net positive impact through your very existence itself it's not ESG it's not corporate social responsibility it's not ticking a box it's really how is the core of my business doing good while it's building its product and solution to the community that it's connected to to the ecology that it's connected to by its very existence it's not going and planting trees it's not even just offsetting carbon but it's about okay i'm building this product and by building this product i'm adding this much of good things back into the community back into the nature so you're like a cycle mm. um, that takes and gives more um, through your existing through your existence and this this might sound uh, like a very far-fetched theory or a far-fetched concept but no it's something that is being picked up not only in europe or, or the us but also in south asia a lot um, and at the very heart of it is um, agriculture and farming and food uh, it's 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 an easy thing to grasp when it comes to those sectors but regenerative principles we believe is applicable to any sector uh, because everybody has a part to play um, uh, in becoming regenerative because mm -hmm. it's not just about how you manage your waste it's also about how you work with your people and and what are your core purposes and values and i'm happy to say as good life x um, you are building a framework that anybody could use not only in sri lanka but across the world of transforming one's company and lifestyle uh, into becoming a much more regenerative one all right now something that's uh, really happening a lot in sri lanka is uh, a brain drain a lot of highly educated people are going out of the country emigrating to um, really uh, seek for greener pastures as they say how do you think this is impacting the startups and the sme sector in sri lanka yeah it's not an easy time to be here to be honest prashant i mean us as millennials i, I think uh, every day people ask me if i'm crazy to be here doing this work um and and i i think it's not me by choosing to be here in this country doing this work right now i know i'm not going to have a normal life as a mid 30 year old uh, person 
uh, but I choose it because I want it and I believe that I can make an impact and create a change by being here um, and that is my choice. I can't um, see that and want a different pasture or, or want a different life I think um, should explore that and, and nobody should should stop that and going out I know is considered as a brain drain but in future it will also be our diaspora who is bringing back um, not just money and dollars but also skill sets and networks so it's a good thing uh, but on the other hand there's also reverse brain drain happening that nobody is paying attention to mm -hmm. I in my team um, work with uh, people who are coming back to Sri Lanka right now who's born and bred outside their um, kids to first generation diaspora um, uh, immigrants who are in other countries who are coming back because they want to build back mm. together with people who are doing good and who are who are really seeing a future here so I think while there's many leaving the country which is unfortunate um, that has I think long-term positive impacts short-term pains um, there's also a reverse brain drain, happen brain drain happening which is good because um, people who choose to stay here like us and people who choose to come here like us uh, li like people who we work with are those who see opportunity in this crisis and through those people I think what we can build together will be very different to what was there for the past 73 years it has not worked it's collapsing and these people are coming now into the economy into the society to explore new avenues to build back a better Sri Lanka and I think um, this momentum and this moment of crisis really has induced that also so I, I see a lot of that and Good Life X um, works with 40 plus experts in Sri Lanka and across the world these are all people who are emotionally invested to build back Sri Lanka not in a in, not in any form of um, charity or CSR but because they see how much of talent we have here how much of potential we have here as a country and how much of resources we, we have everything here it's just a matter of realigning it um, so I think um, overall I think um, there's a lot of positives in, in this momentum too. All right. Thank you so much. That was uh, Randula De Silva, the founder and CEO of Good Life X. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you for having me. All right. And that winds up today's episode of Business Today. Do join us next week as well for the very latest. Till then, have a good night. Yes. So whoever who 